Let's jump into the first step, understanding your org's business processes. What are we talking about? We're talking about understanding each step in each of the processes that are being done by everyone on your team in the organization, understanding what they do, who else does these tasks, why they do it, and how they do it, let alone where they do it, because the answer is not always Salesforce. This is of critical importance because understanding this information will provide you with the framework for every question or request that comes your way as the Salesforce admin. Let's put it this way. If you don't understand the core business processes, you're just an order taker. Someone will ask you to create a field and all you could do is create the field that they asked for. You're not really adding any value if you don't understand their business processes, if you don't understand the why, if you don't understand the process around that field, who else needs it, why they need it, what they're going to do with it next. You need to, in order to understand all of this, you need to understand the business processes. Now you might be wondering, how and where do we even start? I actually find myself in this situation all the time. As a Salesforce consultant, I'm often working with new clients, new organizations that I have never encountered before. Sometimes I barely even understand what it is they do as an organization to earn money or how they operate. I certainly have no clue who's who in the organization and who does what. So as a Salesforce consultant, when they come to me and ask for help of any kind, asking for help on a particular field or updating a page layout or helping to understand or explain or modify their sharing rules or implementing some level of automation, I need to go through this entire process each time I work with a client because without this information, I am of minimal help to them. So how do we start? I often tell clients, imagine that I'm a brand new employee on your team. And let's start with the first step in the process. So you need to explain to me as if I'm a brand new employee and explain to me from the first step in the process when someone first encounters your organization, what happens? Now in most organizations, we might refer to this as lead generation or business development or prospecting. So think of it as a very linear process. The first step would be the first time we interact with someone, then we are nurturing them. We might be qualifying them in order to figure out, are we actually going to be engaged in any type of ongoing relationship with this individual that might involve sales, fulfillment, might involve marketing. Marketing might be involved before the lead generation even happens, because as part of the lead generation, the lead is reaching out to us in response to some marketing initiatives that we have done. But certainly as people become customers or engaged in our organization, uh, we're doing marketing with them. It might involve customer service as well. So everything from the very beginning, the first interaction we have with a prospect or a lead until the very end, until the relationship is done. So think of it as a very linear process. And I often like to start at the very initial step because usually you can't jump in in the middle without understanding what has happened prior. So I turn to my new clients and I tell them, imagine that I'm a brand new employee on your team and let's start at the very first step. Someone calls in and says, hey, I stumbled on your website. I want to learn more. I want to understand the products and services that you're offering. I'd love to get involved. So tell me, today's my first day on the job. Tell me, what is it that I'm supposed to do? What pieces of information am I supposed to ask of them in order to figure out if we can even help them? And once I capture those pieces of information, where am I supposed to put that information? And where do I, as an employee, turn to in order to get the access that information, where do I access those resources? And then at the same time, after I'm done with that first interaction, what do I do next? 
So I just spoke to a brand new prospect. I asked him all of the questions. I got his uh, name, phone number, email address, etc. I found out which products and services he might be interested in, hung up the call, and now what do I do? So usually when I ask these questions, the person who I'm talking to usually turns to me and says, follow up. I say, what does that mean? Today's my first day on the job. Follow up with who? What? And by the way, if the person that I spoke with, if they are from one geographical region versus another or interested in one product line versus another, am I supposed to be perhaps delegating that lead, assigning it to someone else? And all of a sudden, lots of information starts to get uncovered. So it's by asking these types of questions, imagining that you're putting yourself in the shoes of an employee from the very first step in the process. And then if it's another team, then okay, you're make believe you're part of that next team that works on nurturing that relationship as an ongoing customer or customer support or marketing and asking all of these questions to get an understanding of what the employees do every single day. What are their responsibilities? What tools do they reference? What do they need to access? Where are they storing data? Because again, it's not always going to be Salesforce. You'll be surprised, but you will find out that, oh yeah, sometimes, yeah, I use this Google Sheet or this Excel spreadsheet or this notepad over here, or these post notes, or sometimes I just leave it in Outlook or Gmail. You need to ask all of these different questions. So, and by the way, you can always turn to the people that you're working with and ask them if perhaps they have maybe an employee manual of some kind, um, where if an, when an employee comes on board day one and they want to orient them on, here's what you need to do, here are our processes, just maybe there's some documentation that can help. Maybe there's some documentation that will reflect visually what their business processes are. That can help streamline the conversation dramatically. It could be a reference point, but I'm also willing to bet that even if you uncover some of this documentation, your discussions with the subject matter experts within the organization are going to reveal that there are many deviations or many anomalies that are not necessarily reflected in the documentation that you've been provided. So we start by asking around within the different business uh, units that are, exist within the organization from a business development perspective, sales perspective, fulfillment, marketing, customer service. They might have different names. There might be slightly different functions within your organization. And start asking who's who and what is it that they do. And then we need to start drilling a little bit deeper. So what do I mean by that? If, for example, we're talking to sales, we need to then start asking, well, the process that you just described, is it for all of sales or maybe just for consumer sales versus commercial sales? Is it for um, all of our product lines or are some of these processes different or different team members get involved for a slightly different product line? Then we also need to identify the various groups that exist within the organization. In other words, the people that are within each of these groups. We need to start listing out the people by name. And while we're doing that, we also need to identify who are the subject matter experts, just one or two subject matter experts within each group that we can then follow up with to get a deeper understanding of the processes of what is it that they do every single day? What tools do they use? every single day. At this point, people often ask me whether or not I have any particular Excel or PowerPoint templates to use to help facilitate these conversations. Personally, I do not. What I do is I have, I do have a document with five questions that I remind myself to ask each time we're discussing any type of process. Those five questions are, who is involved? What do they do? When do they do it? Where do they do it? Using what tools, what systems, what data repositories? Why do they do it? 
by continuously asking those five questions for each critical step in any organizational process, you will uncover a tremendous amount of information, the core information that you need to know in order to fully understand the process that the organization is working with. Now, by the way, one of the other things that I have, found, I have personally found to be incredibly helpful when facilitating these conversations is to start drawing it out, either even if you're using pen and paper. That's totally cool. You can use pen and paper when having in-person discussions or maybe getting on a whiteboard and starting to draw it out and you're drawing out square circles with arrows saying, okay, so it goes from this step to that step. And just by visually representing it that way, visually representing exactly what you're hearing from the team, very often you will find that they respond by saying, oh wait, actually there are three other steps that we do in between this step and the other step. And great, let's go ahead and discuss it. Let's uncover some of those details. So it's okay if you do it on paper. It's also okay if you do it digitally. Sometimes it's better if you start off with it on paper, let them physically scribble on it and draw whatever arrows they want, and then you convert it into a digital document. And I guarantee that pretty much every time someone looks at it, it's going to evolve. Someone's going to look at it and say, oh yeah, there are a couple of other details that we forgot to include on here. So I don't start off with any hardcore templates of any kind, but then during the process, I'm creating a tremendous amount of documentation that represents what processes exist within the organization and who does what, where they do it, how they do it, and why they do it. So at this point, you might be wondering, will those five questions really reveal all of the details that I need to know about any particular business process that we have within the organization? And the answer is asking those five questions will give you the fundamental core details that the organization needs to know. And I guarantee as a Salesforce admin, this will be incredibly insightful for you. Now at the same time, I'm about to share with you lots of other detailed, more specific granular questions that you can ask to take it one step deeper. Because a lot of times when you're working with someone, asking them some of these questions, they might be a little defensive. They might not necessarily know how to answer some of these questions. They might not get to the level of detail that you truly need. They might give you one word or one sentence answers when you really need a little bit more. So I'm going to share with you some additional far more granular questions. So let's hit it off. What are we talking about? First one, what is this step about? So you might be talking about a particular business process where the subject matter expert is sharing with you about a particular process that's really important to them and they're sharing with you all of the details about it, but you don't understand the context in within which this comes up. How frequently does it come? Why is this important? Like what? So you need to sometimes just ask the question of what is this step really about? And going along with that, why are we doing it? Another question that you might find very helpful that you need to flat out ask because you're not going to get these details right up front is what details do we need to capture specifically at this particular step? So if, let's make believe we're a nonprofit and a donor calls in and wants to give a donation. So precisely what details do I need to capture during this step in the process if I were the employee who's picking up that phone call? What internal reference materials should I be referencing during this step, if at all? Who else is involved. Based on what criteria should something perhaps get reassigned to someone else on the team? What are we supposed to do next after talking to the customer prospect or after sending the proposal or after taking in their um, customer support issue 
complaint and logging it in the system. What are we supposed to do next? What type of follow-up cadence is expected? So let's say I am in a sales role and I'm responsible for a bunch of customers and some of them are broken down by tier one, tier two, and tier three. What cadence, with what cadence am I expected to be following up with my tier one and tier two customers? Am I supposed to be reaching out to them once a week, once a month, once a quarter? What's expected of me? What types of tasks are expected to happen and by whom and when? What type of follow-up reminders are needed and for whom? What tools are being used today by the people who are currently performing these steps? Who else is permitted to have access to this data? Should they have read-only access or are they permitted to have edit access? Who else on the team does these steps today? What does this team's org structure look like today? Who reports to who? And within the team, are they also broken down by sub-teams? And who do they report into? What are the most painful aspects of this process that the team is struggling with today? Which steps in the process are begging to be automated? Which steps in this process are already automated today? And is that automation working to introduce efficiencies to the organization, or is it perhaps creating a complicated mess? Now keep in mind when talking about automation, a very important aspect that we need to focus on is, have we defined every exception that could potentially arise when this automation should not happen? What reports metrics or dashboards are important to measure this team's success. Who needs to see these metrics? Once you've had all of these exploratory conversations, gathered the details, the background of everything that you need in order to understand their business processes, who does what, how they do it, why they do it, where they do it. Now we get visual. What am I talking about? Well, now is the time, now that you've had all of this discussion, you understand conceptually what they do. Now you're going to go ahead and take a look, looking over their shoulder, sitting next to the subject matter expert who's actually doing these steps and watching to see how they do it. Now, by the way, even though I'm describing it as if you're doing it in person, I strongly recommend as a Salesforce admin, even if you are physically located next to the person who you're working with, I strongly suggest that you do this through any type of web sharing, screen sharing mechanism that allows you to record the meeting because I guarantee it will save you a dramatic amount of time and having to go back to them. You won't have to go back to them as often to ask, can you show me that screen again? Or to identify all of the fields that were on that particular screen, whatever screen they're going to show you, or where do you click on next? What was the name of that button that you had trouble with? By recording the screen share, it will save you a tremendous amount of time and grief. So what you're gonna do is this. You're going to sit down with your subject matter expert after having had all of this discussion and putting together your own documentation of everything that they do, who does what, what metrics are important to them, who needs to see what type of records. You have them log into their system and they're sharing their screen. And now they're walking you through in a visual way, showing how and where they perform all of the steps that they do. I guarantee that just by doing this exercise alone, it will be very revealing to you in terms of the types of efficiencies or inefficiencies that they are working with that they perhaps can't even articulate themselves. But by understanding the business process, by understanding what they need to do and why they're doing it and leaving this step for last, makes it far more powerful for you as the Salesforce admin to now put everything together conceptually and translate it to the click-throughs on the screen itself. 
So that brings us to the end of unit one. I hope you found this unit helpful. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next unit.